G'day guys, welcome back. Welcome to Pouring Your Heart Out. So lovely to have you all here today. Now this is going to be part two of my Terrazzo Resin Coasters. Now part one, if you missed it, was me showing you how I made these Terrazzo looking chips. So check that out. I'll link the other video up in the top right hand corner for you. Um, but you can also just search on my on my videos. Right, so this is exciting. This, this was my inspiration piece for the colours. I just got that from Google. I think it's a nice idea, like if you want, not sure what colours go together, you can see something and then try and match them. So I've got like this pale bluey turquoise um, and then this tan kind of colour. A very dark chocolate brown. I can't tell if that's black or not, but I made it a dark chocolate brown. I like that. And then we've got this really pale peachy pink colour. And I'm going to do a white background. But the first thing I need to do before I even go and um, make up my resin is place these guys. Now, on my previous video, I said to you where I, when, when I made these, I've got a glossy side and a matte side. I personally think the matte side is going to look better, so I'm going to just place them down any which way. And I'm going to do this first before I pour the resin on, because when I pour the resin on and then like try and stick them down afterwards, um, they may kind of all move and shift and things like that. So <laughs> just kind of, oops, yes, so, oh gosh, no. Want shiny side up, Julie, shiny side up. All right, if I just do that, shiny side up. It's easy enough to do, and I can actually feel if they're shiny or not. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. It's not a lot of difference in them, but you can, you can see shiny side up. So basically, that's just what I'm going to do. Just put these in randomly. No rhyme or reason for it. <laughs> You'd think I could do this, couldn't you? <laughs> Shiny side up, Julie! Guys, come down and help me. I obviously don't know what I'm doing. Shiny side up. All right. Get <laughs> down you go. I'm looking at them and they go, okay, that's glossy. Uh, that's that's matte. Down. All right, so let's just... Um... Oh, and I thought I'd try my, my six coaster today because I haven't used a lot, have I? Oh, gosh, I can't get this right, you guys. Bit of a pea brain today so yeah this is my six geode coaster mold it is in my ebay store if you want to grab yourself one all right that'll do for the the blue i think so i want some big ones and some little ones i'll put more in but let's just put some of this color in next and see this one's a much bigger piece which is okay i'm i'm happy with that I think they'll look nice if there's a bit of a, a variation. So um, I won't bore you with the whole doing this part. <laughs> oh god, I'm a worry. I'm a worry. Yep. <laughs> Shiny side up. <laughs> oh gosh. So yeah, um, I'll just continue doing this. Actually, how about I... Oh, maybe people want to watch it. See, this one's got a little bit of um, a little bit of the dark on it. Ah, see, they're not. No. See, I thought they'd be able to really snap, but no, they don't. You have to cut them, but you have to cut them when they're um, soft. <laughs> don't try and cut them once your resin's set up. Makes it a bit difficult to do. All right. Um, oh, look. Shall I just do this while you're here? Because I'll, I'll put a little bit of each of the colours on and then um, I'll just finish them off, hey? I think a nice sort of random random pattern is nice. Don't try to make it too matchy-matchy. Right, this is the dark. Easy to see on this one which one's up and which one's down. Because the dark is so shiny on top. It doesn't matter if they kind of, you know, touch each other a bit. I think once we pour the resin in, um, it, it's going to kind of move them a little bit anyway. 
So they may kind of overlap a little bit, not sure what they're going to do. I'm just trying to, and it doesn't matter if you get like two next to each other, try not to make them too kind of matchy matchy. I'm just sort of not thinking about it, I'm just kind of placing them. Think about it too much then. I end up putting the wrong things in the wrong places. Alright, hopefully they're looking terrazzo-ish. Terrazzo? Terrazzo? I don't know. I don't even know if I've been saying it right. Terrazzo? Terrazzo? Tomato? Tomato? I don't know. Alright, that's black, uh, chocolate brown. Let's do the peachy ones. So I'll put a bit of each colour in and then um, I'll just finish them off. Saves you being bored watching me place them all. You can actually feel which ones are smooth. Some of the white resin, when I pour the white resin on, um, some of it's going to kind of flow underneath anyway. So, because I want that sort of look where, you know, in real terrazzo, the pieces kind of look embedded in whatever substrate you're using, concrete or whatever, they kind of look as if they've been embedded. And that's kind of the look that I want. I don't want them to look as if they've just been placed on top. I actually saw a video of someone who did a little experiment, which I thought was quite nice. And they put, um, they did it like, put the, um, I think, the, oh, look, I can't remember if they put the resin in first. But they did one where they poured the whole thing with resin and then just kind of stuck these on top. And um, it didn't look nearly as nice as the ones where they were sort of half embedded into the resin on the other side. Because you want them to look as if it's natural, not just stuck on top, you know. And natural looking means they are sort of embedded into your concrete or whatever it is that you're using. If you're bored, guys, just fast forward, hey? <laughs> okay, nearly done. Let's put a few little ones in. I'm trying to get some different shapes. Probably go and put some more. I, I want to kind of fill up the spaces. I don't want to have too, too many gaps left. It's hard to tell on this one actually which is shiny and which is not. Because <laughs> it's pale. The darker ones are easier to tell. Alright. So I'm just going to put a few more in. I might make up a few more small ones. Because you can see in this there's quite a lot of little tiny pieces jutting in there. So I might cut a few or break a few if I can. Um, I'll fill that up. I'll mix up my resin and then I'll come back to you. Right, I'm back. That was a bit of an effort. <laughs> it took me a little while to place everything. Um, now, I know they're kind of a little bit close to each other, but I was thinking that once the white resin goes in, it might sort of fill underneath some of them. Now, I'm just going to cut some little tiny pieces. I've already started. Just little pieces, just to let them sort of fall in the gaps if there are any little gaps. I'm not going to place them, I'm just going to sort of let them sit loosely on top and they can just fill in any little gaps that there may be. Found these little, well, these little scissors thingies in my cupboard. They're really helpful. They, they cut through these really easily. Just be careful of your fingers, but... Alright, so that's all I'm doing. Um, and then, yeah, just to sort of fill in any of the little gaps, if there are any. Or it can kind of look a little bit more three-dimensional, you know. Maybe a little bit more realistic with a little bit more 3D going on. So that's why I thought I'll just put, cut, cut these little tiny bits and they can just kind of fall in anywhere if they want to. If they don't want to, that's okay too. Um, 
All right, now I better get on with my resin because it'll start going hot because I've made up made up 350 grams um, because I'm doing the six coasters. So I did, what did I do? 250 grams of A and 107 grams of B. And that should give me enough. They hold about 60 grams each, so about two ounces each, these little coaster molds. It's hard to know when to stop you guys. Somebody stop me, take the scissors away from me. Okay, there we go, that'll do. Um, now, I'm going with um, Lorez Pure White, and it is a really pure white. Now, I have to be careful because I don't want to make it too opaque. I want to be able to see, like, if there's layers, you know, of, of different colours. I want to be able to kind of see them. So, yeah. Let's just start off with a little bit first. This is the uh, Platinum 360 Plus. I like to use it because it sets up nice and quick. A lot of you are using it now over in the States and other countries. It's available world, pretty much worldwide now. The details are down in my description. So yeah, it's a, it's a good, it's quite an affordable resin too. So, well, I think it is anyway. Now that's a little bit too milky. So I'll put a bit more in. But obviously the thicker you make your resin, you know, the, the darker the white's going to look. And these are six millimeters deep, so about a quarter of an inch, I think. <laughs> six millimeters. Yeah, about a quarter of an inch deep. But um, I do want to be able to see, you know, like the colors overlapping, you know what I mean? If they do overlap, I want to be able to see that, not just, just the ones that are sort of poking through. A little bit more. Just wiping my stick over into my paper towel each time so that I don't get resin in my white. I think that'll do. I use that white for my waves, my froth ocean foamy thing <laughs> that I made. That turns out really nice in white. Alrighty, oh my gosh, I'm nervous. What if they all move? What if they all move? Oh gosh. Oh well. They're, they're sort of kind, kind of sticky, so hopefully they'll kind of stay. That's, you can kind of still see this through the stick there, so hopefully that'll work. I don't know, you guys. Unless I try one. I don't want to do more of these because I've still got those colours left and I've got these. Um, and I want to make some other colours. I want to do a variety of them. And I also want to do a, a matching one of these with the same stones for my coaster holder. So that'll be coming up soon. Alright, I think that will... Oh gosh, I just don't know. I just don't know whether it should be opaque, opaque or a little bit sort of milky still. Right, I'm going to put a little bit more in. Just because it's a big cup, you see. So it looks really quite white. But when it's not as deep, it might not look so white. So I think what I'll do is I'm going to spray with a little bit of alcohol first. Um, and hopefully it'll help decrease the bubbles because there's lots of, <laughs> there's going to be lots of little areas where uh, the bubbles are going to want to sit, aren't they? All right, let's start with, I shall move that away. Does that look, does that look similar? <laughs> Hope so. Let's start. Three little sprays. Now I'm going to find a tile just to pour onto, just gently onto the same spot, and let the resin kind of move. Actually, I better move you over. So you don't overflow. Just pour onto a bigger tile so that it doesn't move too much. All right, we'll let that spread, and I'll come back to it. Same with this one. Picked a big piece of tile to pour onto. Don't 
float away. Oh, that could be the little tiny bits floating away. Hopefully they won't move too much. It's just those little ones floating away. What do you think of my colour choice? I like it. Actually, this would go well in my Hamptons style decor that I have. Although it's more sort of navy blues and whites, but oh, and, and chocolate. It's got browns in there as well, the timber floors and, and the blues and the white. So yeah, it kind of matches. But you could definitely pick colours that suit your colour scheme. And they'd be really nice as gifts, wouldn't they? Okay, just want to move those out of the way. Another hot day today here in Queensland, Australia. When I came into the studio this morning, it was 29 degrees in here, 29 degrees Celsius. So I had to put the aircon on. I think I'm going to have a lot of white left over. That's okay, I can make some more sea foams. Can't I? Actually, the other thing you could do. Actually, that's a good idea. You know how I want some more of these? I wanted grey. I said to you I wanted grey. If I've got some white left over, I'll just put some black in it. And make grey and then I can fill that up. Woohoo! I just want a pale grey. That'll work, hey? So that's a, it's a nice little silicon mould to have, this one. Um, it's got those on both sides, not that you can use both at the same time. Oh, I think you're overflowing. But so yeah, they're really good for um, leftover resin. You can just mix up any colour. Or if you're using blues or greens or whatever, pop them in there and then you can make some mosaics later on. Made up a little bit too much resin. You know when you're mixing up resin and you're supposed to go 250 grams and 107 and then you go, oops, I've gone to 10, 10, well, like 115 and you think, oh my gosh, now I've got to add more of A to balance B and then you end up with more resin that you need. Yep, that's what happened to me today. So I've got a little bit more than I would normally use for this particular mould. But that's okay. And I'm not doing the hearts either. I, well, I guess I could, but I could, couldn't I? I keep forgetting about them. But you can. If you've got this mould, you've got two little keychains or pendants or something that just come along with it. Okay. That's it. Let's give this a quick torch. Pop bubbles. Hopefully we haven't got too many bubbles on the other side. Hopefully that alcohol helped. But there's not much I can do about the bubbles. Let's just poke these down a bit. You can see how it's a little bit on the transparent side. You can still see see through it. So I'm hoping that that will be nice. I, I don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe it's a bit too transparent. I don't know, you guys. <laughs> don't know. First time I've done this. All right. Um, hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. Um, have I got enough? Make sure I've got enough in these before I go and mix the the white into a grey. I think they're all full. They're all doming. I want them to all dome so that I don't have that sharp edge. Right. Um, I'm just going to pop a little bit of the um, acrylic ink into this. Let's just do. Let's just start with one drop. I may need a little bit more white just to make it a little bit more opaque as well. You see, there's a nice little grey happening there. One more drop. Pretty strong, this stuff, the acrylic ink. See, I've already got that dark chocolate and the pretty pink, so I just want a nice soft sort of pale grey to go with that. I think that's good. Just going to make it a little bit more on the opaque side. Add a little bit more white. 
I'm a bit worried about my coasters now. Oh, you're supposed to be able to see through. Oh my gosh. Now I wanted to be able to see the different layers of the terrazzo tiles. Um, you know, if they're overlapping a little bit on the other side. But then I didn't want it too opaque. Right, one more little drop of this, and I think we're done, skis. All right, let's see how that goes. Resin's getting nice and warm now. For using this mold, you're better off with, um, you know, a resin that's maybe hasn't been sitting too long because it gets a bit thick. How's that looked with that? Yep. That'll be nice. What other colour would you put with those? Brown, pink, grey. Mm, do I want one more drop? No, let's just do this. All right. Um, haven't got much room here and I can't move that, so I'm just going to have to... I do have another one of these moulds. <laughs> I've got a lot of these moulds. If you guys want any, they're in my eBay store. I do that now I'm looking for oh there it is palette knife actually you know what it's much it's much better if you put that down and then you put that down that way if you make any mess it's you can just throw that bit of paper towel away it makes it really easy you just go up over the edges like that Um, and then, yeah, if anything falls over the edge, you can just easily pick this up once it's done and throw your piece of paper towel away. And then you've got a nice clean work surface again for the next day. All right, so trying to push those in as you go along. You don't want any air bubbles in those, do you? So push down, do it a few times. I won't be able to fill it all the way because it drops down here. So I'll just do just over half really. And that'll do me. It's starting to drop away over the edge there. Now make sure that if you're using this um, that you goes over the top don't leave like too many of your little lines your crisscrosses sticking out otherwise um, you'll have like a film over the top when you unmold them all and they'll kind of all be joined together so make sure that you really scrape that top area off something in there get out All right, so I'm just scraping it off into my excess here. They're really easy to demold. Oh, something else in there. A little bit more. Anyway, you get the general idea. I'm just playing with it now, trying to fill it up. So anyway, that's me done. Done skis. I've Come along and just fill these extras in as well. I keep going further and further down, don't I? Oh gosh. Stop. Oh dear. Alright, there's that last little one. And then it's going over the edge, so no more. Put the palette knife down, Julie. Alright, one more little push over the edge. Wipe it on the paper towel. Okay, there we go. So hopefully um, these will turn out pretty. Give them another little torch. Be really careful when you're torching. Don't burn your, your resin or your mould. So that's me done. I've got a little bit of grey left. Maybe I can make some grey waves. Alright. Um, there you go. <laughs> that was another long video, wasn't it? Alright, I'll see you in the morning. Or maybe even later on tonight and we'll unmold these and hopefully hopefully the fact that you can see 
the bits sticking through isn't going to be a problem. Mm, I have to actually I might poke that one down a bit. Why are you right? Oh gosh. I hope they're all not floating, you guys. <laughs> oh, we'll find out later. All right. See you soon. All right, you guys. I'm back. It's almost 6 p.m. Hopefully they're okay. Hopefully they're ready to come out. Oh, that might be a little bit bendy still. All right. Who thinks that those little resin pieces have sunk and are going to look good? And who thinks they've floated and it's going to look bad? <laughs> are we ready? Shall we have a look? I'm going to do the countdown. One. Or is it to count up? Two. Three. Oh, oh, we've got bubbles underneath. Oh, it looks amazing though, except for the bubbles. Oh, no. All right, I know how to stop that. I'm going to have to mix them, mix the little pieces. Oh, I wonder if I could sand it. Um, see, I can't just pour clear over it because... See how, this is what I want to see how that's embedded into the white there a little bit. Oh, that's so upsetting. I guess I could sand it. Are they all going to be like that? Oh, no. Oh, yes, they are. Oh, my gosh. Oh, how upsetting. They look really pretty, though. I'm going to have to get my sander out, you guys. <laughs> yep, definitely going to have to sand them and then put a top coat on. Because I really, really like them and I went to so much trouble making them. Look at all the air bubbles trapped underneath. I'm not going to sand that. I'll get Tubby to do it. It won't need a lot. Yep, I'll do that because I really, really like those. They're really pretty. Okay, um, let me move them out of the way. And we'll have a look and see what these have turned out like. Just move those out of the way there for a minute. Oh, that's so upsetting. I love the colours though, and I just I really love how it's turned out. Just a shame about those bubbles. Next time, and you know, when you're doing something new, it's always a learning process, isn't it? Next time, um, I'm not gonna worry about placing them because it took so long. What I'll do is I'll mix them up, I might just mix all the colours together and um actually put them in some clear resin and pour them in yep I'll see if that works <laughs> there's got to be a way around this all right see how easy that comes off that actually I might leave them on that and then I can easily just pick them up I'm going to get these out so that you can see <laughs> look at that they just all just fall out so easily Definitely would have to do that with these little pieces. Unless, of course, you're making a mosaic um, and you want to place them, you know, you want to, for instance, do a flower, for instance. You know, then you would place them where you want them. Anyway, you get the general idea. <laughs> I won't do it all. Oh, that's them anyway. I won't, I won't do them all. And then we just tip them into the little cup here with the other pieces. And there we go. Look, we've got a mixture. I don't like that one. You're a bit of a weird colour. A mixture of the pink and the grey and the black. And they look really pretty, don't they? So what I would do with those is just mix them with resin clear resin and then tip them in I'll have to come up with another way of doing these you guys if anyone has any suggestions let me know open to suggestions um, I guess the other thing I could do is like I said mix them mix these in a little bit of clear just a little bit and put that down and then when it's kind of tacky, mm, no, because then, see, you won't get that embedded look. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'll have to think about it. Anyway, 
I will fix these. I'll sand them down and um, put a clear coat on them. So, um, yeah, stay tuned for that. I'll show you the finished product shortly. Enjoy my little video of when I took my coasters down to the men's shed. I did try and sand them myself. Um, I took them up to my husband's shed and I put the sand, the coasters in the vise, um, and then I got the orbital sander and I pushed down on it as hard as I could, and it hardly scratched the surface. And I thought, oh, this is just not going to work. So anyway, I went up to the local men's shed. And uh, they gave them a good sanding for me. Um, but the holes were actually really quite deep. This one here and this one, they actually sanded quite so deep that they took out my whole resin piece. So anyway, they, they look much better than they did. So I'm going to go with them because I don't want to waste them. But I want a top coat. But because I want to thicken them up a little bit, I want to put them back in here. But... If I just put them straight in, the resin's going to sort of drip down the sides on some places and not on others, and it's going to be a little bit, um, they'll be different, oh, what's the word? They won't, they won't be like the same all the way around. So what I thought I would do is just put down a little bit of resin, I've done that one, just to see if it would work. And again, I, I'm hoping I'm not going to get bubbles underneath. But I am going to put cork on the bottom of these, because I thought this sort of brownie colour would look nice with the cork. Um, so I'm going to do that. So I'm just going to coat this, the base, and make sure that it's all coated so that I'm not getting any blank areas. But if I do, that's fine. I'm going to coat it with the cork anyway. So that's done. Now what I do is I'm going to stick it back in. And I'm going to give it a bit of a push. And let the resin come up the sides. See how it's oozing out? I want to do that. That way I get a nice seal all the way around like I did the in you know the first time I poured them. It's a little bit of you know a bit messy because then you've got to go around and, and wipe the edges, but I can't think of any other way of doing it without the resin being uneven and some areas having resin on the sides and then other areas not having resin on the sides, if you know what I mean. Hello, little gecko. <laughs> so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go and do this all uh, to them all real quick, and then um, I'll do the top coat, the flat coat, and hopefully that will work. It's a bit of a drama, isn't it, doing all this? But look, it's a learning experience, that's for sure. Um, I, yeah, I shouldn't have put the little pieces down onto the silicone. That was my mistake. I didn't even sort of think about getting air bubbles underneath them but now we know not to do that don't we and when I do my coaster holder in the next video for these I will do it the other way and we'll see if it's any different okay so we'll do that push that in give it a bit of a push and a wiggle get all that resin to come up the sides Wipe off the excess, move on to the next one. I'm not going to stop and pause it, guys, because I've got resin all over my hands, all over my gloves, and I'm a big sticky mess. So just fast forward. Sorry, I can't stop now, but I've got to get this done before my resin sets up. And it's just a, a way too sticky mess for me to stop and pause and then come back to it and all that. You know the drill. Much easier when you're in the studio on your own and you can just do your own thing. But when you're sort of doing a video for people, you got to do it differently, don't you? It's not how you would normally go about things. Okay, that one's done. I'm just making sure I don't have any blank spots. 
a push and a wiggle, a push and a wiggle. Actually, I might get my little baby wipes out in a minute to clean up my mess. Mm, there's a dot, a dot of something. Oh, you won't even notice that anyway. I've ordered some cork. You know the cork that you peel the, the paper off and then it's adhesive? I've ordered some of those. Um, 10 centimeters, so they should fit these coasters nicely. And I just thought it would be really nice to pick up the brown in this, the you know, the brown of the cork. Make it look really natural, organic sort of a look, rather than just putting the little silicone bumper feet on, which is what I normally do. I thought I'll try this, see what it looks like. Should probably be torching this, shouldn't I, beforehand? But it's such a very thin layer. If I had to torch this now, I'd probably burn my mold. Because there's not much there between the um, silicon and the resin. A push and a shake, a push and a shake. I will come and clean this up later. It's gonna be it's gonna be a hard one to clean up. Alright, last one you guys. Thanks for your patience. Because I really like these. I don't want to waste them. And in my next video, I'll show you how to do my coaster holder. For those that haven't seen my coaster holder, it's very unique. It's not like the other coaster holders that you can buy. You know, we have to make the feet separately and hope they fit in. No, it's not like that designed by me and hopefully you guys will like it another little pit there okay here we go last one in i hope i'm hoping i'm squeezing the air out from underneath <laughs> a push and a shake a push and a shake right let me just clean up my mess real quick and then we'll start the top coating hey so, fresh gloves now I think I've pushed them down enough that it's kind of all stopped oozing now. That one's already got resin on it. All right, so here. Now all we have to do is put a puddle of resin on and I'm using the 360 plus because it will be set nicely by tomorrow morning. So just because of the way the the man at the men's shed sanded it, that's kind of a bit uneven. You know, he did his best. I, I can't complain. He did his best. I think when something's your own, you take a little bit more care, hey? I just sort of thought, yep, yeah, that'll do. <laughs> oh, he sanded off part of my pieces. It went a bit deep there. But like I said, it, it's a learning curve um, and I really love these and I want to waste them so I'm doing whatever I can to try and save them. So I'm sorry if I'm boring you, but I'm trying to to save them. And I guess it's, you know, it might be helpful to some other people who have maybe gone through the same thing um, and need to put their coasters back into the mould. It's just, I know when I've done this before, when I've popped something back into it, the mould, the resin did kind of seep down, um, you know, through the edges there. And then I wasn't happy with the finish because some areas had drips down past them and then others didn't. And, you know, it just, it wasn't good. So I thought, well, I'll try this. I haven't done this before. I'm hoping, you know, I'm not going to get bubbles on the other side. But if I am, I'm going to cover them with the cork so it won't matter, will it? You're already covered. Just pushing this resin out to the edges. And because it's a, a nice thick resin, it'll dome. So it'll give us a nice rounded edge there. <clears throat> so we won't have any sharp pieces to sand once I demold these tomorrow. Hoping I can, hoping the resin's not going to be too thick and I can still pop bubbles. 
This one needs a bit more. All right, so I'll, I'll leave it at that, you guys. Um, I'll just have another little play with it, make sure everything's full and to the edges and bubble free. Oh, drop to drip, or drip to drop. And, um, oh my gosh, that was an ordeal. And I'll see you in the morning. I'll have to do it bright and early before the builders start making all their noise again. Oh, look at that, 15 minutes. I'm so sorry. All right, I'll see you in the morning. So I was hoping to get into the studio early this morning before the excavator started. But um, he beat me to it at 7 a.m. So if you can hear him in the background, that's what's going on. All righty, let's get these out, hey, and see how I've done. Let's have a look at the the sides okay that looks good so far so good everything's nice and even and look at the top beautiful shiny surface there all right that's looking good happy with that tiny little bit of overflow there that I'll have to sand, um, sand off but that's pretty good all right, let's get the next one out. I mean, you've already seen these, so there's nothing really to unmold as such, is there? It's not like we're looking at the back. So yeah, really happy with those, except for that one. <laughs> That's the only one that I'm worried about. I'll have a set of five, I guess. And I can feel that there's resin along the edge there because it's shiny so it's obviously done what it was supposed to do and, and gone down the sides rather than leave gaps that's, that. and that's the one that they've sanded <laughs> my piece right out oh, I'll just turf that one we don't need to have a set of six do we? we can have a set of five so yeah really happy with them and um, <clears throat> I got a little notification to say that my um, cook has been delivered so I'll have to go up and check the post box and see if it's in there and then um, we can put some cork on the backs hey so that will be the next thing that I do but uh, yeah looking good so far yay <laughs> see you soon for the cork stage so I went up to my letterbox just in just about need a packed lunch to go up there a two acre block it's a long way up to the up to the ladder box and these were in there all those and all these and look so these are the self-adhesive ones I was telling you about and they're nice and thin look at that because I didn't want like a really thick chunky coaster I was a bit bent of the one on top I might go skip that and go to the next one and let's see let's see if they're gonna work hey eh? if they're gonna fit You can hear builders in the background that's what hurt so it is <laughs> from the builders all right let's try one. Oh, got a bit of dust on it all right let's see if I can position this I think you only get one go at getting it right and hopefully hopefully that's it okay <laughs> push it down oh look look it's perfect wow Oh, it looks so good. See what I mean about the colour of the cork matching in? I'm going to come up behind you. Behind my camera. Look at that. How cool is that, hey? Love it. All right, let's do that to all of them. And then we'll have a lovely set, won't we? Um, I got these. Where did I get these? I just got these on eBay. I get everything on eBay. I kind of hold it above until it's I think it's in the right spot there we go another one so now you can stack them because you don't have to worry about them getting scratched hey if I can get the backing off <laughs> oh. there we go <laughs> 
that's sticky, see? <laughs> so cool. Right, move out of the way so I've got some room here. Line it up. Excellent. All right, let's do the next one. I'll just do them real quick. Um, and then we're done. I'll take a photo of them for you. Outside, in the sun. You can see what the finished product looks like. Oops, I dropped a bit of something on there. Make sure I get that off, otherwise we'll have a lump underneath, won't we? We don't want that. So just make sure it's all nice and clean before you stick them down. Ta-da! This is fun. It's easy too. Easy peasy. So next time I do these, I will learn from my mistakes and put down a little bit of resin first. I have lots of other colours that I want to try and do. I'm going to do a beige one. I'm going to do a grey one. I want to do grey with black and white. I've actually ordered some um, like black and white aquarium stones, like little pebbles, because I thought they would look really pretty. So I want to do those as well. So I've got lots of ideas of things that I would like to do with um, the little resin tiles, the chips that I made, um, and also these little guys that I made, and also the aquarium pebbles when they come. So yeah, just thought I'd try a few different things. And I've got lots of these <laughs> cork backings, so I need to make lots of coasters, hey? Oh, that one's a little bit off. I don't know if I can, look, I've got a little bit of a lip there. Talking too much, I wasn't concentrating. Okay, I'm going to actually have to break that to get that off. All right, I'll have to do that. Oh gosh, they're difficult to get off, aren't they? Once you've got it on. Anyway, I'll have to take that off because I want to, I want to put it on properly. So I will do that. <laughs> Look at these ones in the meantime. I'll fix this up, put another backing on it. And um, yeah, I'll take a photo of them. And thank you so much for watching. It's coming off a bit easier now. Thank you so much for watching and um, I'll see you for the next video, all right? Real soon. Okay, bye for now.